So today in the booth with us, we got Gabe the Fourth, man. How you feeling, G? Good, good. How you doing? I'm great, man. You know, another day in paradise. How you, I appreciate you for pulling up. You hear me? Yeah. So where are you from for the people who don't know? Sacramento. Born and raised. Okay, you've been here your whole life. Yeah. All right. So uh, how was life growing up in Sacramento? I mean, it was cool. You know what I mean? I wasn't really like anything extra for me. You know, I had my blessings growing up, so. Regular shit? Yeah, it was pretty regular, you know. And you had but, like moms and pops around and shit? Yeah. Um, but it was a, it was kind of weird, you know, growing up really for me at least, just cause I was the oldest. So I, I don't know what it was, but I always bump heads with my pops. So like I was always living in other places and stuff like that. Every time we get into t some type of disagreement or something like that, or some type of scuffle, like, I would leave, so. Through the scene. Huh? Through the scene. Yeah, pretty much for, you know, just go be somewhere else, you know what I mean? Just cause can't be there, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? Um, How many siblings you got? Just two. Okay. And yeah. you say you're the oldest one? No. Yeah. But, I mean, other than that, like I said, I mean, it's pretty normal. Just grew up in South Sac and then ended up going to high school. Um, and I grow for a little bit and then yeah, that was pretty much it. You know, so like regular shit. Yeah, nothing pretty, crazy. Pretty regular, nothing crazy. You <laughs> know, I'm not like you know, what I'm saying I'm not no celebrity, no gangster, nothing like that. Okay. I'm just regular life. Yeah. So how'd you get into like making music and shit then? Um. Well, so my mom's dad was like that one feel, you know, that would be singing at like at and mm -hmm. weddings and shit like that. Going crazy. Right, exactly. <laughs> Always trying to flex. But like he loved music, you know, so much so that he had pretty much every single one. He had like eight kids, right? That was all my aunts and uncles and every single one he made him play an instrument. You know what I mean? My mom's okay. was guitar. Yeah. So, so you can get it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, once that one day I was like in it was like probably like the seventh or the eighth grade. I remember like I was at some like parent-teacher conference and there happened to be a guitar in the room and my mom was like, oh yeah, you know, I used to play that. Woo, woo, woo. I was like, swear, you know? And then I had found a guitar in my like in my grandma's garage. And so like, she just showed me how to play a couple of things. And then from there, you know, I smooth took that. That was my guitar at that point. I don't know who it was. It was probably like one of my uncles or something <laughs> like that, but yeah, I took it. Oh my God, wait, I've been singing out all the ways and shit. Yeah, I'm not, I wasn't even tripping. I was like, yeah, it's me now. I'm gonna practice. For sure, that's fire, bro. Yeah, so. Yeah, from there, you know, um, like the singing shit, though, like my mom used to sing. My mom used to like to sing all the time. She still do. But like she used to sing to me when I was like a little kid. And then she, I don't know, I guess she would always have me singing when I was like, you know, a little kid. And then I don't know, like it never really like. I guess I never really like because people be like, oh, when did you start singing? I'm like, bro, I've been singing my whole life. You know, what I mean, I never really woke up one day and was like, oh, yeah, I'm going to try to sing, I don't know, like my mom just sang to me and then would have me singing and stuff like that. And it's just been around for forever. Yeah, exactly. Oh God. So what kind of music you listen to growing up? Um, Like your moms and pops, what they had on? Uh, they had like Luther Vandross and like okay. Tower of Power and, you know, Parliament and shit like that. So it was cool. Like I got to listen to like Earth, Wind and Fire and like, you know, like those types of like that type of music, that's like real like big ass bands and like hella production to it. I, I have a different level of respect for that. Real classic shit. Yeah, and like really singing. You know what I mean? Like there's no auto tune, no effects, no nothing. Just they really, really, really sing fucking for sing. Back in the day, you feel me? Right, yeah. You really had to just bitch. bar up. For sure. <laughs> like there was no like, oh yeah, I'm a melodyne. You like, no, I you have to bar this hella take vocals. right now. Yeah. Hell the vocals. So um I don't know. <laughs> like, let me put this boy there. That was really back in the era when them niggas really had a secret position. Bro, it was crazy. <laughs> like, no, when they were really like five mics lined up side by side and they just hit the, you know what I'm saying? For like, sure. If you ain't got the dance moves, you ain't nah, got the bro, like, you not getting no bitches, bro. But yeah, like, we listened to that type of shit growing up. And then, you know, we had like also, you know, I'm Hispanic. So we had other like, you know, Latin artists and stuff that my folks would listen to. Like singers, like male and female, honestly. I'm trying to think of some names. But like, 
my mom used oh my mom used to listen to Luis Miguel all the time, bro. Mm. Like I don't know, that's some like real '90s shit right there. Hello, like Pancho Brazo. I don't like know. That. It's like some real like lover boy Hispanic shit, bro. Okay. Like real like Hispanic lover boy shit. But that's fire. So yeah, that's pretty much what it was. And then you know, for me at least, as I started to get older, you know, like all that like late '90s and 2000s R&B shit came into play, and mm-hmm. I, like you know, my tias would listen to it, my older cousins and stuff like that. And then that's how I got into it too. That's far like uh, Usher, Shanti, and shit like shit that. like that. You know, like boys to men, shit like mm-hmm. that. Yeah. Okay, that's fire. So, what was your stage name before Gabe the Four? Gabe. <laughs> yeah, okay. never even really. Like people would try to put me on some shit, and then they'd be like, "Bro, what do you want me to put? You know, like what's your rapper name or something like that? What's your singing name?" I would just be like, "I don't know, but Gabe." <laughs> just like, like Gabe. Yeah. That's your name. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. Why not use that shit? Yeah. Exactly. So, so being in being in Sacramento your whole life, how you feel about the Sacramento music scene? I mean, it's cool. Like, it definitely has a purpose that it can serve. Just because I feel like, like, there's a lot of camaraderie. You know, as long as you're not a dick, mm-hmm. there's a lot of camaraderie. Like, hella people are like very supportive out here, and so like I feel like for up and coming, definitely there's a purpose that it, that it can like that could be served, and so. Um, yeah, but like I feel like still though, you know, like I'm sure if you're really trying to grow, you know, you're gonna outgrow a lot of things, and Sacramento is gonna be one of them. You know what I'm saying? Facts. Like, and so. And it does hurt to branch out. You feel me? No, nah, absolutely not. Like honestly, like it, it's just, and it's not like, and it's not like any, any, it's not like any, uh, like this to Sac either, because you know I got mad love for Sac. You sure. know what I mean? I, like, I lived in L.A. for a couple of years, but I was always putting on for sight, you know what I mean? And so it's just it's just a matter of, like, business and stuff like that. If you think about it, bro, like, think about, like, the type of reach. Like, if you really take over SAC, bro, like, I don't know. Like, I mean, yeah, sure, with, like, technology and whatever, but, like, you could probably do it from SAC. But, like, eventually, bro, you're going to have to go to, like, L.A. or New York or something sure. like that, and you might just have to reside there, you know what I mean? Like, because... You might just be doing shit on the day-to-day where you just got to be out there, bro. And there's so much more money out there. You know what I mean? Bigger opportunities for sure. Yeah, but, like, SAC does, like, SAC, like, coming up in SAC, I feel like, has helped make me, like, you know, like, how, like, people know me right now. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. because of how supportive it is, you know? Shout out, like, Dre T, you know, and Andreas, a new kitchen. Like, I ain't gonna lie, just between them two right there, bro. Like, they, like, I have gotten so much support. You know what I mean? Because there's people like that in SAC. You know what I mean? That's fire. Yeah. Oh, God. So tell me how your uh, vision for your future has changed over the years. For my future? hmm I don't know. I just... Before, I used to want a regular job, you know, because that's what I was raised to do. You know, even though, like, my folks or my mom specifically, you know, like, used to sing with me and stuff like that. But, like, they still will always be like, oh you know, get a job because you don't need that. And so... That consistent paycheck, for sure. Like a lot. Um, yeah, and so, like, that was always really pushed on me. Um, and that's why I never really did music for a while because I just didn't think it was something that, you know, I could do. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, there were some certain circumstances that, you know, kind of pushed me towards that. And, like, I... Uh, I just ended up doing it. I just said, fuck it, you know? So, like, before, I used to think I'm just going to get a job and then do this music shit for fun. But, like, now, like, I really want to do this music shit for real, you know? And then see if I could find something that helps me pay my bills so that I could do my music shit. You know what I mean? Thanks. That's, like, that's my photography right now. It's, like, I'm trying to make my bread with my photos. And then, you know what I mean? Okay, you do photography, too? Yeah. How long have you been doing that for? Um... Like three, four years now, and and like I just I'm hella low key with it, bro. Like I, but I be doing a lot of work, you know. I I shoot for like for fun, really, like to practice a lot, like doing automotive and concerts and shit. He's under the he, he laid down on the couch, uh, but yeah, um, I be doing hella photo work. I got like a little studio off of like Eleventh and V. But we about to move out, but yeah, you know, I got a little studio over there, you know, we doing our thing. Big edit sessions and shit over there, huh? Yeah, exactly. So, you know, we got like the whole lighting set up, the backdrops, everything, you know, and then I got all my gear and I be doing like, you know, grad shoes and 
family shoots and okay. shit. Like really whatever, honestly. Yeah, whatever line up for sure. Yeah, for everything sure. from like low riders to like whatever, bro. Those are your shorts. Oh yeah, you know, yeah. Oh shit, yeah, you're right. I've like I've I shot at like, you know, District 30 and like Dive Bar and shit like that. Okay. Yeah, like I used to do like their marketing and shit like that. So um Are they Google photos and shit like that? Bro, huh? yeah, no, I would be out there like, you know, shit at night, you know, taking pictures of the club scene and whatnot and then in there helping them do their Instagram or whatever. You know what I mean? That's like, fire. Yeah, like that's what I would be doing. Yeah. So um That's reaching a whole new market in the I mean, yeah, even like, you know, bro and I'm sure, bro, you know, like well, like true potheads, like, you know, I done some of their shit, you know what I mean? So like So you've been fucking around with it for a minute then? Yeah, for surely. You like, booked, so you know you good at. Oh yeah. No, no, GL, that's how you know you good. Niggas be booked. Yeah, no. Nah. Oh yeah, our cookie too. Our cookie too. Yeah, bro, that's so, R.I.P. Our shit, cookie, oh, bro. God, bro. I'm so that's here. fucked up, bro. I'm I so promise mad. you, I was I was over there shooting one time a video. I'm like, oh yeah, I'm about to go pop in the odd cookie, bro. Nope. No chance. Nope. <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> I'm like, brother, that's how they doing them. That's, yeah, that's yeah. just fucked up. Don't man. even get me started with that, bro. That shit had me <laughs> punching the air. Yeah, I, like That's I did all lit, all their pictures and shit like that, bro. All her Instagram. <laughs> you have me punching the air. Bro, I was pissed. That nigga day job. Fuck. Yeah, man. bro. I was there yeah. damn near every day, every night, bro. That's blitz, bro. No cap. But yeah, so you know the photo shit, bro. Is really just my other, like you know my my other, like source of income I try to be doing it with. So because like I'm just. Bro, ever since I was little, bro, like, I have never liked having a job, bro. Like, I've never wanted having a job. I've always just been like, oh, I know how I can make money. For sure. Like, bro, when I was little, I'm like, I'm mowing lawns for $5 a piece, bro. You catch me with 50 bucks at the end because I mowed 10 lawns. For sure. What the fuck? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, I was ready to find out whatever I could do to make money. You know what I mean? And so, like, that being said, I, it just didn't make sense to me to be sitting down doing something that I don't want to do mm-hmm. for minimal bread. You know what I mean? I I'm I'm, o- I'm over here with NPCs, basically. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like, tripping. I don't like that. I can't do it. Like, I'd be really shaking in my chair. Can't fucking sit still. <laughs> like, and so that being said, you know, I, I find more, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, what's that word? Like, gratification? Mm-hmm. Like, from doing like photo shit like i hella like aside from you know getting paid obviously you know seeing a little check hit or something like that it's tight to have people hit me and be like bro that pictures was tight as fuck you know what i mean like i just did some pictures for shannon battle that comedian Mm -hmm. um and like you know i did it for him and a couple other comedians over at punchline and like bro it was cool like they had all hit me and they're like, man, you know, these pictures are tight as fuck, bro. Like, I can't wait to post them. Boop, 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 boop. Sure. I'm like, you feel good when niggas it's tight, bro. Yeah, yeah. Really appreciate that I love shit. that shit, bro, because it's a form of art, too. You know what I mean? So, like, it's like, it's just like someone telling me they like my song. I'm like, yeah, hell yeah. Every time. You know what I mean? So, who, who, um, my bad, who inspires you to make music? Um, like, famously or like, or some, like, some, anyone? Some, anybody. Um, uh, I mean, I don't know, like, I just, I be drawing inspiration from different things because, like, you know, like I said, I have my upbringing with the types of music that I've listened to and that I like, but then also there's certain aspects of, like, other types of music that I like. Like, for example, um, I held, like, guitar, and I held, like, like, flamenco guitar and stuff like that, and so I be trying to put guitar on all my beats, you know what I mean? Like, you know, I be trying to do different things like that, or, like, I just like the way Warren Hill be singing, bro. So like, you know what I mean? Like, I like listening to her music. Um, okay, so a little bit of everything gets you inspired. Yeah, or like the way like Brent Fires be layering his vocal tracks, like, you know, Sonder and shit like that, bro. Like, yeah, I mean, it's the same thing down there, but you know what I mean? Facts, so you really be paying attention to that shit then, huh? Yeah, bro, I'm damn near like a nerd for it, you know what I mean? <laughs> that's, but that's how it's supposed to be, especially if you love it, you hear me? Exactly. Why do you feel like music is so important to the people in the culture? Um, in the culture, I mean, honestly, in general, bro, music is important because I feel like it's therapy, really. Like, before I even made music, like I said, like, music, I didn't make music, bro, to like, two, three years ago. You know what I mean? Like, actually, like, recording and, like, performing, that type of shit. Before that, I would be, like, singing in the car, singing, you know, like, you know, in my room or something like that growing up. And I would, like, I have hella 
numerous vim- vivid memories, bro, of like me really being like upset and and like pissed off for whatever reason, you know, going through it. Like I said, I was like growing up, like I was butt ahead with my pops. Like I would always just retreat to my room if I could and like just play my guitar or like, you know, learn some shit, you know, hop on YouTube and just watch somebody play some shit until I know how to play it myself. And that, that was really therapy to me, bro. Like, and then once I learned that I could like express myself even further by like, like putting my emotions or my thoughts on paper, mm-hmm. like, damn, that shit was tight. It was a wrap. Okay. Like it was a wrap. And so like, and it was crazy because like, even to complete that, like fast forward to, you know, three years ago, I'm starting to like show people my music and I'm seeing how not only am I able to express myself, but then it's going to resonate with the next person because of whatever, going you know, on in their life. whether I'm singing and they like it or exactly. whether it's something I'm saying is connecting with them or they relate. Like it's, yeah, it's crazy. Like it's cool. Like it's cool that I could do that. That's fire, bro. That's a, you know what I mean? That's a real cool. answer it's, though, for real. Yeah, it's cool that music could do that. Not me. It's cool that music can do that. Like, yeah, like one of my one of my you know best friends. That's for Beatnik. Like his most recent project, I have watched him perform that and bring people to tears. Hmm. Like that shit. That's what music can do. You know Facts. what I'm saying? And so like that's why I like music. You know what I mean? And all my music has never been the type of shit where it's like you know kind of on the superficial end of things. It's always like deep or transparent. Or I'm trying to fuck, but like still, <laughs> like. That's what it is. You got a favorite artist? No. Music to me, honestly, it's like asking me my my favorite food, Mm. honestly, because I ain't gonna lie, I'm a big boy. I like all types of food. (laughs) You know what I mean? And and really though, it's just a matter of like my mood because I could listen to so many different things. Like my music interest is hella vast. Mm. You know what I mean? So. Whatever's going on today. Yeah, really, it's just how I'm feeling. I feel that. Yeah. So how would you best describe the music you make? I don't know. I like, you know, obviously, like, it starts with, like, it seems like it has a foundation of, like, R&B, right? But I have, like, 808. So, like, when I mean banging beats, I have hella 808s, like, real hard 808s and some, and the beats sometimes, yeah. And so I'm not too sure. Like, I would just say some type of, like, R&B, you know what I'm saying? Some, okay. So what's your creative process like? Um, it depends. I mean, if I'm making my beat, um, you know, if I'm not making the beat, like, and somebody, like, presents me a beat, right? Damn, I got burp, bro. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> um, my bad. Um, yeah, if somebody, like, brings me a beat, it's like, hey, let's hop on this track real quick. Like, honestly, what I'll do is, like, I'll t- play it hella loud, and then I'll just go, like, record something real quick. And usually, like, that little freestyle, like, to the beat initially is usually, like, the like the best one, bro, I promise you. It's crazy. Like, you know, the, the melodies go crazy. The writing is different. And then it's, like, usually it's just, like, going with that first instinct because it's usually it's the best, you know. And so I'll go record it real quick, and then I'll come back, and I'll just listen to it and then write my shit, you know what I'm saying, kind of according to what I did. Off the melody. Yeah, exactly. And most of the time, you know, most of the words is there because, you know, I'm like freestyling or whatever, but like, um, but yeah, so, but if I'm making the beat, usually I'll just start with like me playing the guitar, like playing some random shit or something like that. I'll, I'll fuck around on splice. Okay. Yeah. Do you feel like smoking or drinking affects your creative process in a certain way? Yeah, unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> as much as I'd like to be like, nah, man, like, yeah, hell yeah. How you feel like it makes it better or worse? It makes it way better, bro. I'm not gonna lie. I don't know if at least if like shit. At least if it's not actually some heat, I'm gonna think it's some heat in the moment. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Whether or not I wake up the next day and be like, okay, let's see what it's looking like. But I, I promise you, more often than not, probably like nine times out of ten, it's looking good. You know what okay. I mean? And I think maybe it has to do with the fact that like I don't know. Either all your emotions get pushed to the surface when you're drunk. And so like everything, yeah. everything you could think of is like right there, ready to, you know what I'm saying? It's like low hanging fruit, ready to pick. Mm-hmm. And so like, kind of just everything just kind of pours out. But 
or either that or like the the liquor, the weed lets you forget about, you know, being self-conscious about some type of shit. And, you know, I don't know. Just let that shit flow. Yeah, exactly. I don't know. Something like that. But either way, yeah, it, it, it fucking hella helps. <laughs> you know what I mean? Okay. Hmm. <laughs> Cause I know niggas be getting blitz, bro. And be popping into sessions. I've I done seen it a couple of times. Niggas didn't get toasty or hella drunk and pop into a session and this. It's not the greatest session. I will be smoking all day, like <laughs> nonstop. I smoke all the damn time, bro. But like, it's like, even if I just got done smoking, if I know I'm pulling up to the stew, I'm smoking, again. I'm rolling up. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Because that's what happens when you a pothead, you feel me? Niggas just, uh, that's how you function, you hear me? Yeah, I guess so, yeah. I mean, it's been like that for a minute now, so. Life. Yeah. <laughs> but. You done any collabs lately? Collabs? Oh, yeah, collabs. Oh, collabs? Yeah. Yeah, I'm, shit, I'm working on some, I'm working on some shit with, uh, so I just got, I just released like this last summer. I just released some shit with Diamond. Um, Diamond got vocals, Diamond Johnson. And then uh, let's see, I got, I got some shit with Jakari coming up. We already recorded it, yeah. Okay, y'all got some heat. Yeah, and then who else? Shit, me and Aaron Lee got something coming up. You know, we working on some shit. I actually got a little feature with, uh, this uh Marmar also too. So okay. like yeah, I'm trying to I got a couple things I got in the works, you know what I mean? That's fire. Yeah. You dropping like a tape or something? Myself, yeah. Well what I, my plan is really is like I have a lot of music of my own that is just solo shit. And so instead of trying to drop like a tape or like a big project, I'm just gonna drop little three packs here and there. You know what I mean? Okay. So I got the first one coming really soon. Flooded. Yeah, pretty much. Like I feel like if you, I could just let you nibble on these three packs instead of just trying to get people to listen to a whole project start to finish. You know, some's gonna get swept under the rug on accident mm -hmm. and be like, "Damn, bro, I really put my heart and soul into this song, bro, and it just got overlooked or something oh, like God. that." You feel me? Yeah. So three at a time is pretty much what the game plan is gonna be. That's fire. Yeah. Who would you like to collab with the most? Like it could be anybody famous, dead or alive, anybody. Um, I don't. You, damn, that's a hard one, bro. <laughs> damn, you said dead or alive. That really fucked me up. You know, I don't somebody. even. I don't even know, bro. Like, I mean, it's weird because like there's people like you know Lauren Hill that I really idolized growing up, like as singers and shit like that. But like, I don't know if I would sound good on a song with Lauren Hill. You know what I mean? But that would be tight as fuck, you know. I mean, to, you know, like her to try. That's right. Like I mean, I'm just saying it would be tight as fuck. Like that's just a person. Like I said that. Like for music as aspect, it would be tight. I mean, shit. Like Brent Fires would be tight too. You know what I mean? That'd be kind of crazy. Gave the fourth Brent Fires. That song would be toxic as hell. That song would be <laughs> terrible. Yeah. <laughs> the bitch is gonna love it though. Probably. That's that. You know, they yeah. love that toxic shit. Yeah. <laughs> If you could open up for any big artist, who would you choose? Damn. I don't know. Big artist. If I could open up for any big artist. Ah, we don't have to circle <laughs> back to that one. I'm trying to think because that would probably be the same thing as the collabs because, you know, it's right up my alley. Okay. You know what I'm saying? It's like the same answer. Brent Fires and shit. Yeah, exactly. Okay. <laughs> I see. Or like, you know, someone, like, you know, anything really R&B oriented, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, like for me, because I like to be at my alley, you know? And the only reason I say that is because I've noticed the one thing as a singer, bro, coming out of sack, like, there's not a lot of singing, you know what I mean? Like, there's not a lot of R&B music. I mean, as I've gotten more, like, immersed in the music community, like, I've, I've met more people, definitely. But I remember, like, the first year I was performing, bro, I was really in a lineup of all rappers yeah, for sure. all the time. And I'd be the only singer. You know what I'm saying? Everybody's turning up, jumping. There's a mosh pit right before my set, bro. <laughs> I'm, like, over here trying to sing everybody to sleep or make people <laughs> fall in talk. love or something like that. Yeah, exactly. I'm like, damn. But it's cool if it's good, though. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. You can't just hop on there. And I mean, I just persevere, bro. Fuck it. I, I said, fuck it. Yeah, you you got to do what you got to do. Exactly. <laughs> At yeah. the end of the day. I'm already here, so fuck for it. For sure. I'm not going to go home. <laughs> How you feel like your ear for music has changed over the years? 
uh, it's definitely got more refined. Like I like how it's a little bit, even though I don't have a lot of like formal music, uh, you know, instruction or like teaching, it's definitely got a little bit more technical because, you know, some, like I said, I've gotten more immersed in the music community and like made some more friends that do the same shit, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And they know those fundamentals and that music theory and they help me out, you know, showing me like little terminology and shit like that. So, um, yeah. I mean, that's pretty much how it is. Like it's gotten better like that, you know, it's gotten more technical. Okay. So like- you really pay attention to shit more. Yeah, exactly. I be trying to like learn shit more. What's one message you give to your fans? Uh, I'm sorry I dropped music so slowly because I'm a perfectionist and I don't like dropping shit I'm not cool with. <laughs> okay, I feel that. Yeah, if I don't like it, I'm for surely not going to upload it to a platform where people can listen to it multiple times. Mm. You know what I'm saying? What's the best advice you give to an up-and-coming artist? Um... Uh, you can pull that off. Uh, my fault. An up and coming artist, honestly, I would say if you feel uncomfortable or if you feel nervous, just do it anyways. You know what I'm saying? Like, like if you feel nervous and shit like that, like when if you got a show and you you think you're not gonna do well, just just do it because that nervousness or that discomfort can really turn to like, you know, like fuel, damn near. Okay, so what's the best advice you've been given as an artist? Pretty much to do the same thing. Honestly, like, people tell me, like, you know, regardless of how many people are, regardless of how many people are at the show, regardless of how many, you know, people you got to come out or how many people know your name there, like, just do your best and try to show out, you know, because you never know who's in the crowd, bro. Like, you never judge a book by its cover. Like, it could be a room full of squares or a room full of people that look like they don't like you or something. I don't know. But the moral of the story is just to to really just give it your all with every opportunity that comes your way. You know what I'm saying? Facts. Because, yeah, like I said, you never know who it's going to be. Like, you know, looking at, paying attention to you, bro. Like, I've had people come to me, like, and be like, oh, I seen you, you know what I'm saying, perform over here, whoop, 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 you know? I'm like, sort of God, I ain't never seen you a day in my life. Like, that's, but that's tight as fuck, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Was... And then the fact that I don't even know when it was, but I just know in my heart that I tried my hardest at every show I gave it to, at like, I, you know, I had. And, you know, you know what I'm saying, the shows. But that's what somebody told me. Like, they just said, no matter what, just keep doing that. Keep that shit consistent. Yeah. That's how I should go. So what's next for what's next for Gabe DeFore? Um, just more solo music. You know, I got a lot of people. I like collabs. I like working with different people because it, it tests versatility. And it's like, also, I'm blessed to have talented friends, bro. Like, I just want to make music with all of them. So, okay. um, you know, I've been getting caught up doing that. So, like, for me next, it's just definitely a lot more solo shit dropping. And then... Um, Hopefully a music video too, if I gain the confidence for, to do so. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. That's gonna be fire. You gotta really be feeling yourself to do a damn uh, music video. I mean, that's what they be saying, bro. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I get it. Come you on. Gotta have, you definitely gotta have the confidence because you I'm gonna have to, to need at least a little fifth of Henny or something on it. <laughs> like, you be out there looking goofy at the music video. Bro, I'm gonna be stiff. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Okay, okay. So before we get up out of here, I'm gonna go through some speed questions real quick. You hear me? This right. or that. Basically. But, All right. So pancakes or waffles? Waffles. Mm, macaroni salad or potato salad? Damn. <laughs> uh, shit. Potato salad. Hot dogs or hamburgers? Hamburgers. Okay. Uh, Cheese cheeseburgers, <laughs> matter of fact. Sweet or sour? Sweet. Chicken nuggets or chicken fingers? Chicken fingers. Pringles or Lay's? Pringles. Coke or Pepsi? Coke. Okay. I feel it. Yeah. Why, why Coke? I don't know. It's just that good shit, bro. Pepsi <laughs> feels synthetic, bro. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Okay. You ever had Coke from McDonald's? 
<laughs> yeah, I, yeah, bro, it's different. It's a special blend, it do bro. Be I swear. Different. And my homie, <laughs> my homie used to work at McDonald's, bro. Listen to this. I promise you, you this is real. My homie used to work at McDonald's, bro. They really got, yeah, they really got, uh, like different, like carbonation tanks or some shit, bro. Like that's is there is something about the Coke, bro, that is special at McDonald's, bro. Like they're the blending process or something. They got extra. Fucking purificators or like fucking percolators or something. That's like really hidden, bro. I swear, even the sprite be extra spicy. <laughs> hey, no cap, McDonald's sprite be extra spicy, bro. If right? you ever have any kind of can't nausea, it, bro, though. I promise I can't you, can't do it. Smack a sprite. <laughs> <laughs> All right, bro. I appreciate you for coming yeah. through. You hear me? Yeah, appreciate you, man. Okay, you want to hit space on there now?